All right, welcome to round five of Grand Prix Dallas Fort Worth. We are watching a standard match between Charles Gendy on the left. Uh, he's a Pro Tour champion, he's a Nationals champion, he was on the World's team. Uh, he's got some Star City game open wins. And, uh, and on the right, we have Adam Yurchik, who has also an impressive resume, most of, most of them being finalists in uh, two Grand Prix and in, and in the Nationals that Charles Gandy won. So this is going to be a rematch of Nationals 2009, the finals. Not sure what both these players are playing, but in the booth, I'm Rashad Miller, and we have Brian Kowal. How you doing, Brian? Hi. I just ordered food. What did you order? <laughs> I got... Um, we don't want to know. No one the double that, that black was... bean and cheese quesadilla and a Dr. Pepper chocolate cake. Oh, is that is that a drink and a cake, or is that the type of cake? That's a cake. Mm. Lunch just got interesting. But anyway, we, we we got we got a match about to start, and it looks like Charles is keeping his hand, but Adam is going should, down to six. This should be a well played match. These guys are both better on the block and know how to know how to run a control deck. Now, did you get a chance to sneak a peek at the cards that Gindy has in his hand? No. I have no idea what these guys are Come playing. Come on, that was your one job. I'm like, Brian I was Cobalt, ordering food. This, this is what you do. I need you. I'm going to do, yours. I'm going to handle everything else. I just need you to sneak a peek while Charles Gindy is drawing his hand to see what he's playing. That's yeah. all I ask. Make, make sure they know about the no chicken, basically, I think. Yeah. It's very important. All right. It's very important that we get that information on the video too. Yeah, that we're recording. Right. You guys are a witness that I uh, wanted something special by order and Rashad for when Rashad messes it up. Right. So, so you could watch the video two rounds later to see if that actually yeah. actually uh, took it, place. It correctly. would be pretty funny. <laughs> when my food shows up and it's wrong. And I, this is round five. You may begin. Goodbye. The round is officially started, and now Adam is going to see if he likes his six cards a little bit better. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it looks like a Congo mirror. Looks like so, this is what you've been waiting for. Yep, so we both lead off with uh, land. Looks like a Celestial Colonnade versus a yep. um, what's the, what's the blue, blue white that comes into play untapped? Sea Chrome, sea Chrome Coast. Coast. Yes. It's going to want to preordain turn one. Kidney's going to drop a squadron hawk and fill up his hand with hawks. So, um, in the cargo mirror, do you want to drop a squadron hawk first, or do you want to drop the uh, Stoneforge Mystic? Which one's the better play? I think Which Stoneforge is. You don't want to risk it getting countered later, you know? But, I mean, uh, do you want to see a squadron hawk get countered? They're both card advantage. I don't know. I yeah. guess. I guess either one, you're happy. Are you winning if you're just attacking with a couple one ones? Compared to like having the sword, having a sword sorted up creature, they have to block every turn. I guess you're right. You're right yet again, Brian yeah. Kowal. How do you do it? How do how do you how do you handle being right all the time? It's a curse, honestly. Like it's it's not easy. <laughs> and speak of the devil, there is a stone forge mystic for Adam Yurchik. He goes and gets the sword of feast and famine. Now, now, one interesting thing I, I learned when I was talking to AJ about this matchup is that um, there's kind of like two stages to the Cargo Mirror. The first stage is you're very concerned about the sword and the hawks and all that stuff. But as the game goes on, that stuff gets less and less important, and the planes it actually turns into a Planeswalker fight because the Planeswalkers start taking over the game. And knowing where you, where you are in the game and what to care about is, he said, was the most important skill. All right, so second... Squadron Hawk for Charles Gendy. He gets another Hawk. Mm -hmm. So he's trickling in the Hawk so he doesn't have to discard. Yeah. When I was walking around the room, almost everybody I talked to, I, I asked them like what they thought the key was in the Hawk match. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Brad Nelson said he just, it, it's just playing better. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> matter what cards you draw. <laughs> Very Brad answer. <laughs> I, 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 think, I think that's um, key in most matchups. Yeah. <laughs> 
Let's see, Yurchik draws a card and he is contemplating. There we go. There is a Squadra Hawk of his own. The best thing you can do is have both. <laughs> So he's going to search out at least one Squadron Hawk. Looks like just one, maybe two. And they have a two Squadron Hawks. Sam Black said in the mirror, you pretty much have to play around everything. And um, having, like, there's weird random one ofs that really swing the matchup. But he, he wouldn't tell me what he those one ofs were. <laughs> I don't well, really him. <laughs> well, I mean, but he obviously, said he, you, you got to save a little bit. Of, you got to yeah. save some secrets for yourself. It's, Sam says he thinks it's the hardest mirror ever. Harder it's than like a one of the most skill fair, intensive. Fairies mirror yeah, is very hard. Uh, well, Sam's a guy who played a lot of fairies. <laughs> I guess he would know. All right, so turn four for Charles Gendy. Let's see what he has for us. We're talking about a guy who played fairies in almost every turn that he could. I was there, and he tried it in Legacy, <laughs> which is, it isn't horrible, but you know, whatever. Where did he play it in Legacy? I, I don't. It was. Uh, I don't remember. But I saw maybe it was Wizards. Maybe I'm mistaken. So Charles Gindy attacks for two with both of his squadron hawks. So it's gonna bring Adam Yurchik down to 17 life. Follows that up with a third squadron hawk. We, we almost got we almost got all four. We, we almost got squadron. The whole squad. Well, the whole squadron. He's going to calmly uh, equip a Bahawk and attack turn four. I think it's pretty ideally what you want to be doing. Yeah, but now. Nah. Right, so let's see. let's see what Charles Goody's got in store for us for his fifth turn. He has a fifth land. And I see a Gideon Drawer in his hand, and he decides to cast it. Both these players have been tapping out, so uh, spells are yeah. just flying. I think he's going to kill that hawk or make everybody attack him. Can't quite see what that number is on Gideon Jura, but I don't see any creatures disappearing. Right. So I'm assuming... But maybe he's just <coughs> thinking about what to do with it. Yeah, I think he's still deciding. He's going to attack with one squadron hawk, bringing Adam down to 16. And I'm guessing that there was a plus two on the Gideon Jura. Gideon? Gideon Jura. I just made up a card. It's um, it's like the Bizarro version. You're it's right. going to be in the next unset. G Gideon Gura? Yeah, it's going to be in the next unset. Two oh, lands. Your, your chick's opening lands. looked pretty much ideal, and now there's a Gideon. So let's, let's see what's. And he missed the land drop, so he's forced to play. Well, he, he didn't miss the land, land drop, drop. But, he, he, uh, but he only has uh, four mana available. Two squadron hearts comes down alongside a creeping tar pit. And so we see that um, Adam Yurchik is splashing black in his in his version. Gideon might, might be taking control here. <laughs> Chick all tapped out. Yeah. One, two, Indy three. gets to do whatever he wants this yep, turn. He's got three mana. He's deciding on oh four mana for yep. Jason Mind Sculptor. A fairly good card by most people's estimation. Do you think he messes up by leaving the Celestial Colonnade untapped instead of like one of his his weaker um, dual ends? So like now your chick can tectonic edge the uh, the Celestial Colonnade, which is what he wants to do anyway, and force his spell through if he wants. I don't know how scared, you know, how concerned Adam Yochik is that uh, Spell Pierce is in Gendy's main deck. Well, he has two mana up. He has a... Oh, he does have two mana up. Colonnade and a... I think his own Tectonic Edge. I guess you just shut me up. I thought, I thought I had a good reasoning, but you know... You know what? Both of these guys have made it further in Nationals than I've ever made it, so... Yeah, but if he, if he kills his celestial colony, he gets just to he gets to just tectonic edge back his uh, creeping carpet. So that's fine, right? That is true. So he's, I guess he's it's asking it, him to do it. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a dare. 
I dare it's you. It's like, sure, take that again. I'll, I'll put you down to three lands, buddy. <laughs> it's gonna be Inquisition of Kozilek. Um, nope, that is Inquisition. It looks like he's revealing. Phil Pierce, two mana leaks, a hawk, and is that a Stoneforge Mystic? That is a Stoneforge Mystic. Is it a Stoneforge Mystic? It's kind of shiny. I think it's a Stoneforge Mystic. Why didn't he play that? Okay, what card? I don't know what card that is. It just got discarded. I, 90% it's a Stoneforge Mystic. It's probably out of somebody's cube. That's planeswalkers versus swords. It looks like <laughs> we'll see. Who, we'll see what wins. It was a Stoneforge Mystic, yes. All right, so our two hawks come in for Adam Yorchik, and they both get blocked by hawks by from uh, Charles Gendy. I guess everybody came in on Gideon, so Gideon takes a little bit of damage too. Yep. And your chick's gonna do exactly what I said. <laughs> so, and edge that counted. Are we gonna see that chain reaction of? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. You have to go for the the singleton black source slash creature land creeper tar pit. You need to have the choice to take out the glacial fortress, but um, and possibly stop. Stop your trick from doing whatever you want to do after combat, but instead, uh, I think wisely chooses to build an island. And post combat, your trick plays a Stoneforge Mystic. It's possibly going to search out a second um, sort of feast and famine, which he does, and he plays lays a land. It's now off to Gendy's turn. I think Gendy's like a day of judgment away from just like locking this game up, though. Which he actually had right on top of his deck. <laughs> <laughs> and there so, uh, we have it. Well played by Gideon, I think. Day of Judgment clears the board of all creatures. But Gideon survives. So I'm assuming Gideon is going to change into a 6-6 six, six in attack. Mm -hmm. But first, Probably. Uh, Chase the Mind Sculptor is going to face seal. So Gideon comes in. It's a 6-6. Six, six. He's a planeswalker. walker. He does it all. Wow, Gideon out of nowhere. Or... Uh, Gindy out of nowhere taking control of this game. Can we call him Gindian? Gindian. No. Okay, <laughs> I, I, I won't do it ever again. <laughs> there comes Gideon again. G Gindy. <laughs> Adam's going to take it. He's going to go down to four, I believe. He's down to four, and down comes a Squadron Hawk. Squadron Hawk, no search. Plays land, passes it to Adam Yochik. And Adam packs it up. So Gindy's <laughs> going to win game one. <laughs> think Yochik should have seen the damage engine coming? Like, should, I don't know. It, should he have been like, oh, why, why didn't he play that Stoneforge Mystic? I don't know. But you know what? If, if Adam Yochik has anyone to blame for that damage judgment, I believe the person to blame would be Brian Kilburn. So, as um, game, GamingEtc.com always reminds you to blame Kibler. And while you're blaming Kibler, why don't you go there and get use our special GG's Live coupon to save 10% off your entire purchase? Yeah, mm -hmm. you, could buy, you could buy like 12 Blaine Kibler t-shirts and three binders and a couple of Jace to Mind sculptors and, you know, save 10% so you'd be saving, I don't know, like... I'm not very good at math. 10% of that. 10%, whatever that is. 10% of that. That's right. 10% of that. GamingExcetera.com. Don't forget to blame Kibler on Facebook. TinyURL.com slash blame Kibler. Right. Or probably just... Dan, Dan the Computer Man is... Is, is not hip on my smooth transitionings, so I'm gonna have to get him. I'm gonna get him up to speed. 
It's only been it's only been three rounds. You're doing pretty good. I'm impressed. I'm not gonna lie. Pretty good for a new guy. <laughs> and his name rhymes like Dan the Computer Man. Right. It's important in that line of work. The shot, the the awesome god. I guess that rhymes, and it's true. Got to look at Adam Yurchik, TCGPlayer.com t-shirt. And uh, if you notice, the, the TCGPlayer.com ticker is up at the top of the screen. They're already, they're already pre-selling um, um, new Phyrexia cards. There are a couple of new Phyrexia cards. Oh, I thought that was new Patrick Harris. Hmm? No. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not. But, uh, yeah, check it out. We already got some lowest prices on all the cards. He's still working for another one. You can get a Jason Mind Sculpture for only ninety dollars and fifteen cents, and that's pretty cheap. Not as cheap as a seventy-one dollar and seventy-seven cent Force Award. Right? <laughs> put it that way. If we're just talking numbers here, you're correct. Every day I see Pacifico with a new picture. So it looks like both of these players are ready. They've already presented. Not a lot of uh, time spent sideboarding. They're probably very familiar with what they want to do. Already have their plans. Yeah, I can't imagine either of these guys coming in here without an idea of what to do in the cargo mirror match. Your chick's gonna fire off at Inquisition of Kozilek turn. But it's oh, he doesn't have to pay mana for his Inquisitions. Sure doesn't. That's pro. <laughs> so right, we have so a sword, a spell pierce, a preordain, a hawk, and a jace balloon. Pretty much everything you could want to, to the Inquisition see. here. You only pick one, but he still has a black open, so maybe he'll just cast another Inquisition right after. <laughs> and the hawk. It's like taking three cards. It looks like Gindy tapped his... Uh, your chicks, Dark Six Rose at the end of his turn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, turn two, Stoneforge Mystic for Adam Yurchik. No doubting we getting a sort of feast and famine. I haven't seen a lot of the one and one split anymore. I think people settled that sort of feast and famine is just too good. You just it, was a, two of those. it was a tight race, but <laughs> in the end, it's feast and famine by a nose. <laughs> <laughs> Gidney's going to pre it in. That looks like both on the bottom. Is that correct? Both on the bottom. He picks up bottom. a scalding turn. Plays an island. I think he may be passing the turn. Threatening the spell pierce. He's digging for something. Something to do. <laughs> Adam surveys his hand. It's two mana available. Definitely has a third in hand. We just tap out for sword here, right? <laughs> Did you just... <laughs> maybe, curve, maybe, curve not. Right on. maybe, maybe not. And then you get to attack for one. It's, it's, um, it's very efficient. But I believe he's going to. Oh, he's going to actually cast a spell. So yeah. a squadron hawk. Well, he knows his hawk is going to resolve because he's seen, he's seen Gindy's hand. He knows it was a counter spell. So, I mean, well, the white is green. <laughs> Might as well get those hawks. Now we can set up for the turn four uh, equipment attack. Then he draws. I think a tunnel magnet. So he goes with the Scalding turn. Pays one, goes down to 18. He's going to put an island into the battlefield. And what do we have next? I think he's going to play Tumble Magnet. Did he draw a Tumble Magnet? I think he did. But I guess he might be playing, a, he might want to play around the uh, spell, spell piece. 
Like, I can't help feeling like your chick is representing one. <laughs> <laughs> In the case you've just joined us, you are watching round five of Grand Prix Dallas Fort Worth. This is a standard event. Uh, your chick doesn't have it. Yep. And in the booth, we got Rashad Miller. I'm joined by Brian Kowal. Right now, we're watching Charles Gendy playing Blue White Cargo versus Adam Yurchik playing Blue White Splash Black Cargo. Fun fact this is a rematch of the 2009 finals of U.S. Nationals. <laughs> Yurchik has a good answer for. Uh, <laughs> For Tumble Magnet, uh, I just won't equip and play Jason Mind Sculptor <laughs> since you tapped out <laughs> again. Pretty good. Would you like to tap N one of my one ones? N nice spell, Pierce. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> right, so Jace the Mind Sculptor does yeah. receive a counter spell. No, no, no. I he, mean, Jace the um, Oh, that was discarding. No, but um, yeah. Your chick brainstormed wisely past the turn and then Gindy just played his Jace so if oh. you remember was in his hand. Oh yeah. And uh, got rid of JTMS. Your chick gets a second sword to answer that tumble magnet the, the hard way. I mean it's not the hardest way to answer this but yeah. It's going to just be a big dance to try to connect with the sword, hopefully. So right now, Adam Yurchuk has two Stone, Stone Forge Mystics and a Squadron Heart in play. Uh, nice collection of land while Charles Gandy has a Tumble Magnet and he just added Jace to my Sculptor. He has a has one Teutonic Edge alongside his sort of assortment of blue and white land. Mm -hmm. He's got a Fate Seal himself. Yep, that's going to bring the Jace up to five loyalty, so it's pretty safe. It's not going to die immediately to Adam Yerchik's board position. And he needs to keep Spell Pierce up. Putting his card at the bottom. So he passes the turn, and in the turn, yeah, Adam Yerchuk is going to put Sword of Feast and Famine into play thanks to Stoneforge Mystic. Mm -hmm. I think that's what makes the Stoneforge Mystic really powerful in these matchups. Just like just making your equipment uncounterable. Just so, just so difficult for both. <laughs> Adam uses Marsh Flats to get a Swamp. Swamp is right underneath our awesome graphics, and there we go. He moved it over for us. One, two mana, and three mana. There's a, a second sword of Second mana. sword. He's going to equip up two guys. Oh, no, so. he used two mana to put it into play with his Stoneforge Mystic. So, right. double equip. Tumble Magnet taps the Squadron Hawk, but the Stoneforge Mystic still gets to attack. Still gets attacked. I'm guessing he's attacking Gindy and untapping all his lands. Yeah, I mean, it hit. You can untap it. Right? Awesome. It looks like Gindy's discarding the card, so yep. that's probably the case. Which will untap your chick. Gindy chooses to discard his sort of Feast of Heaven. <laughs> Yurchik has a fresh fresh set of land untapped thanks to the sort of piece of fabric, so what is he going to be able to do with it? Hide behind a wall of color magic and dominate the game? I don't see any counter spells in his hand though. Looks like he has four cards in hand, possibly five. There is a Sun Titan. And Gendy just throws up his hands, says, sure, that resolves. Yep. <laughs> Sometimes he gets back to Marsh Plants. Sure, dude. <laughs> so Jace uses the zero ability of draw three, put two cards back on top of the library. Gendy's 
deciding which two to put back. And he better hope one of these is Day of Judgment. <laughs> there you go, that's Gimby in the tank. It's a rough spot. Despite having a Jason Mines Gilbert and a Gideon Duran play, uh, this looks like a pretty rough spot for Gindy. He's going to Gideon yes. the Gideon. Gideon the five mana selective vindicate. Probably attack Gindy with both his creatures. <laughs> All three, I guess. Yep, Gindy skips it up. We get three. Important thing in this mirror, I think, is wasting no time in scooping when you can't win the game anymore. Because yeah. time's going to be a factor. Right, I, I've seen a lot of these games get drawn out, and drawn out, and drawn out. And uh, both players are in a yeah. position where Maybe. You know, they're just staring at a bunch of 1 1s and 1 2s. No one can get through. You notice both of these guys pretty much scooped it as soon as they didn't see any chance of recovering. Looks like both players are just checking their sideboards. I don't think they actually have big plans to bring in cards, uh, but it's always a good idea to take a look at your sideboard every time. You never know if there's something just to give you a little bit of an edge that you you know, you didn't see before. The extra extra card from the opponent that was, oh, I have a I have a better option in my sideboard that I can bring in. I'll try. There's Gandy looking through his deck, deciding if it's the perfect deck configuration that he can bring to this game three, this pivotal game three in round five, Grand Prix down, Dallas Fort Worth. We are watching this live. This is live, unless you're watching the recorded footage. In which yeah. case, you're watching what was once live right. and now recorded. You're probably, you know, sitting, taking a jog or something. You're like, you're that <laughs> <laughs> exercising, <laughs> watching <laughs> your podcast. You're jogging with the, uh, with the, like the little wrist. Uh, the, uh, the wristband holder for your iPod. Keep, just keep going, man. Just feel the burn and listen wait till you me. see what happens to the third There you go. <laughs> feel the burn. You're almost there. You're at the last mile. You're, you're going to do it. You're almost home. But then you can watch me. Then you can watch me, except you never get to see me on, you know, during the game. Yeah, I guess. Just, the the replays never have us, right? No. Uh, Sometimes in the very beginning, there's a little bit. Just a little brief. A little brief. It's. We have to hear the voice and imagine the beauty that is Rashad Miller and Brian Cole. Winner, Mr. Smiley. It's hard to imagine. It is. It, it's really happening, though. You're really it, listening it to us. It is. You're really listening to us. <laughs> and we're really watching Charles Gandy and Adam Yerchik. This is not U.S. Nationals 2009. This is 2011. This is Grand Prix Dallas, Fort Worth. We are watching Standard, and we are watching Chicago. We're watching some GGs. We're watching some good games. And they live. Are live. Unless, live. It, then again, you're watching them before. How important do you think going first is in this matchup? I think going first and being able to sneak out a creature underneath a mana leak yeah. is very important. We, yeah, you have those two key, key, key drops on turn two. See, it seems. Yeah, but then when you play one, they get to play one, right? So then what? Do you like. Just not play it? No, no, no. You have like, I think you still play it. You have it. three mana leaks, you don't play it, right? You just say, all right, go. <laughs> I, th I think it helps to be the first one to get to four mana also. 
Yeah. Four mana seems very important. To be able to lay another <laughs> creature and then have mm -hmm. that one that up. So Charles keeps his seven and Adam is going down to six. Yep. Just like in game one. So we saw the first game dominated by Planeswalkers pretty much. The second game dominated by getting the Hawks going right away, connecting with those Hawks, and then he couldn't come back. So what's left to dominate the third game? Because I don't know. That's well, what's gonna happen. That's what I'm finding interesting. I mean, this is what I'm trying to figure out by watching these matches, and like hopefully people like don't just see like a mirror match. Like who cares what happens? You know, it's a sort of draws up here. Mm -hmm. But hopefully we see some like. I'm just trying to figure out like what the basic strategy is. To, like, I'll go there. And um, usually, I when I when I play a deck or I bring a deck to the tournament, I try to bring a deck that I know no one else is going to play, so that I don't have to deal with the mirror. Likewise. But, <laughs> but, but and th there were some situations where the deck I played, you know, a lot of people played it, and there is a there's a strategy that is there for the mirror. It's not just all luck. It's right. not just draws the best. It's who has the better plan for the mirror. And sometimes you just, if you have the better plan, if you know what cards you need to see, what card, what order you need to play these cards in, you get, you squeak out those extra percentages, percent of points, and you end up winning more Jun mirrors or more Fairies right. mirrors. Jun's a good, ex good example. Like, a lot of people thought that was just like, you're both spinning the wheel and yeah. who knows what's going to happen. But most good players I talk to so they always want their, their mirror matches. All right, so here we go. We got turn one for Gindy, tap land. Turn one for Adam Yurchik is going to involve preordain. Looks like he puts them both on top. He likes what he sees. He's going to draw one of them and see what it is. That's time for Gindy. Has the Gindy follows up with a turn two Stoneforge Mystic. It's another one of those altered art Stoneforge Mystics. Now it's giving us, giving us a lot of trouble. Trying to we love those. It was. Sword of Feast and Fat. You know what? I can't wait for Sword of uh, War Piece. I'm sure it's going to be good enough to, to squeak out. It's the squeak a slot in this deck. It's got to be. It'll probably, there'll definitely be one in this deck. It's, it's whether it's going to be good enough for the other decks to play it to beat up on this deck. You know? Yeah, that's true. Some are saying that could be the end of worlds, but we'll see. You still get, you're still going to see it played more in um, in Stoneforge decks than yeah, anywhere. Exactly, maybe in Boros Mirrors. So Stoneforge missing for Adam Yerchik gets a uh, feast of famine of his own. Passes back again. Celestial Colonnade, and I think he might be. Done. He's probably going to pass a turn and use his Stoneforge Mystic again. Yep. Going first is good. <laughs> and there we go, Adam Yorchik, keep the topic. So we have a basic mirror of things that are happening here. Right. Except They've that Adam Yorchik is doing it one turn behind. are joined by Head Judge. Legendary level, Judge. Legendary Level 5 Judge, Sheldon Bittery. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. How are you doing, boys? Doing? We're, we're, we're doing okay. We're watching, watching some, some games. watching some Congo versus Congo. That's some Congo. we got some Congo on the side. I we're see. Gonna, we're going to bring that over once this match is So over. you're spending some time filling in the blanks, as it were? Yeah. Uh, 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 Adam and, and Charles, they're, they're doing a good job of doing yeah. stuff. we got, <laughs> we got two great players here. Right. Can these guys team members together, as a matter of fact? They were. We, we mentioned they, that. This is the rematch. It's the finals. Yeah. 2009. 2009. Um, Adam just takes takes it and lets lets him attack um, attack with the Stoneforge Mystic. Yep. This yeah. this card's a card. Let's Gindy and tap. Gindy uses the extra mana to play a Jace, which he spell pierces. So it doesn't get to put his sword into play on his turn, and then. Uh, it's going to Inquisition him back. Yep. Inquisition, only legal right? target was that sword. Mm -hmm. Second a, sword, yeah. Yep, showed a Gideon, a Sun Titan, and a Day of Judgment. Let's play a Hawk, probably to make sure he can chump block and not have discard a card and let him untap again. Yeah. 
But your chick, uh, this, taking the hit from that sword, I can, I can deal. <laughs> so, you know what, sometimes you have to take two extra damage and discard a card and let your opponent attack some land. And, and you just say what else you got. Right? So, so everything's cool and calm on the, this on the is tournament a, front? This has been a very smooth tournament so far. Got a great staff of... Got a great staff of... 60 judges. 60, 60 judges? Well, between the main event and the public events. Mm. Nine countries around the world coming into Texas to do this giant GP. I thought they came here for the barbecue. They actually came here for the Rashad Miller. They could go to almost any GP. Shot Miller, no. Fair. So, that's actually like, something else. Maybe right? it was for Sean Miller. So that's like and, and barbecue. barbecue. That's like one judge for every 20 players. <laughs> All right, so now, well, we're, again, there's players for right, a couple yeah, yeah. events, too. So, Gendy attacks with Speaking his. Speaking of legendary people, I'm getting out of the way and letting this guy sit down. Oh, you know what? Oh, we don't, we don't want him. Yeah. No, no, no. Sheldon, sit. 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 Go do your job, I guess. What do we got here? We. Give me and your chick in the mirror match. Well, close to mirror match. Blue, white, black. Dark blade. Dark blade versus Dark Calm blade. Death. Bat out of hell. <laughs> I'm just naming random Calm Death. In case you didn't want to play guess the voice, this is Calum uh, Woods. Someone said that I was going to sit down. He knew. Calum Woods. David Pierce. I don't know how to like that. Oh, Andrew Funkhauser. Like okay. David Pierce yeah, work. and Andrew Pumphauser is, that is please report to Scorpenberg. Uh, Adam's going to drop his own sword into play. Gindy will finger his bat out in <laughs> response. So that'll tell What do you think that's a tell for? He discards a Sun Titan. He's not the kind of card you want to be discarding. Um, you want to be playing that after you discard something. And if one taps all his lands, follows up combat with the Squadron Hawk. Squadron Dominance. What did he just use to counter? Manaly. He just let it go and play another squad rock. <laughs> um, an uncharacteristic misplay, I think. Maybe he's got something that costs a black or a color. Maybe. Oh, I don't know. Or condemned. Mm -hmm. I'm confused by that. Maybe he doesn't have another swamp or planes in his deck. Maybe he only wants one plane. Is that possible? I've heard the, uh, the, the Dark Blade deck has some shaky mana. It does have shaky mana, but probably more than a single planes. Would be yeah, I would, I would think so. Unless his graveyard is riddled with planes and swamps. Yu Yu Watanabe watching from the sidelines. Watanabe? Watanabe? Watanabe. Watanabe. Watanabe sounds like a bad board game. And now, for the makers of Jumanji, Watanabe. I don't bash you when you come with some Paul Ratchet looks sexy I wasn't bashing you, I was just Bash. correcting your pronunciation. Something just got wrapped. The entire board, that's what happened. This is a low mana game for it looks how long how long they've been in, in the battle there. Five minutes each? Or is can you four? And he has four. Yeah, you know he has four. Sword is not as great when it's only not tapping four or five lands. Still very good. Oh, we have creeping tar pit plus active. Oh yeah. That's pretty sick. Yeah. Uh, Play Gideon. This happens every time that happens. It's not a good deal. What is this? Jace? This is going to be... No, it's 
Not looking good for so looking good to your check here. Granted, there's no cards in it, but soon Gindy will not either. That was uh, that was the uh, I'm upset yeah. throw of the card. I will right, well, discard the spell pierce. Get the discard the spell here. pierce. Uh, I've heard. <laughs> oh, there's the Gideon. I knew it was coming. Yeah, you always untap yeah, into a Gideon. Yeah. If you have a sword active, you just know you're gonna draw a Gideon. So it works. And that'll be your trick winning. Two one. Four turns. Just two lands the Gideon. So Zanebag is also playing my deck. He has a Vista first two one plays. Bones at negative eighty. Plays a worm coil engine. Uh, and then Zane just sits there with his burst gear because he can't tag the worm coil engine to go to negative two and die. Because the burst gear is sitting in play. Zane bricks for like 11 turns. He has like, like Gideon's and he's just killing with a target and a persecutor and a play like a Grave Titan or whatever on defense and Doom Blade and the worm coil engine. Just like sitting there, just brick, 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 brick. But like his opponent can't do anything. He can't wrap it. He can't chase it. He right. says, like every time he plays a planeswalker, he just dies the turn after. It's quite comical. Because like, you're technically not dead there, but what could you possibly do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a 6-6 fly trample play, and you had negatives. So what eventually you have to do? Eventually, Zane drew a go for the throat and had a million man in play, and the one man that this one had was not nearly enough. <laughs> I played against Valakut, which is probably the easiest match of the game. But that's good to us. But that's it.